using this dy on dx notation, they want us to find, I'm going to put this over here so it's a bit easier to read, find the, and then they introduce a couple of words, one of which you definitely know, and one of which you may have encountered, but a lot of you wouldn't. The tangent, what is that? What is the tangent? It's that, it's that special line that just touches, it right? just touches onto your curve. Okay? So that's what, what a tangent is. Has anyone encountered the word normal yet? in physics. It's a thing that you actually, yeah, okay. So let's have a look at this. Um, draw for me just any curve you like, any curve you like. And um, pick a point on your curve, like say here, and draw in the tangent. You know what the tangent looks like, so it's going to sort of go off, there we go, and it's going to just touch there, okay. Now the normal is very closely related to the tangent. It'll go through the same spot, right there that we've just picked. But the difference is, yeah, it's at right angles, so it's perpendicular to this tangent. So if I put in a new line here like so, and I put it in at right angles, so this guy here is the normal. We'll come to calculating that a bit later on. Let's just focus on the tangent first. Okay? So they want us to find the tangent, by which they mean find the equation of the tangent to each curve. There's our curve for part C at the point indicated. So then they provide us this set of coordinates. J, I think, it, is it negative one, zero? Yeah. yeah, negative one, zero, good. Okay, so when we have a look at this, because all we're changing is the notation, this is going to look just like what we did before. All of the machinery is the same. We're just going to write it very differently, slightly. So, I want the equation of the tangent. I've already got a point that this tangent apparently goes through. So what other piece of information do I need along with that point? What other information do I need to find the equation of this line? Have a think. Well, it's gradient. I, I need the gradient, right? Like that's what makes this tangent the tangent. For example, this blue line I've just drawn, it also goes through that point, but it's not the tangent because it doesn't have the right gradient. So because we're interested in gradient, that's why I'm going to differentiate. I've got y equals this, so I'm going to use my dy on dx notation to indicate the derivative. Okay? Can we differentiate this please? x squared, what to do with that? 2x. 2x, thank you very much. That 2 has come out the front. Power is reduced by 1, so now it's 2x to the power of 1, which I don't need to write. And then my next term, sorry? Fantastic. So we're starting to get a little bit comfortable. We're like, oh, I know what to do with this. My brain's getting more used to this process. Okay. So what we've got here is the gradient function. It's not the gradient, it's the gradient at any particular spot. That's why it can change according to x. What am I going to put into it to get a gradient I want? Uh, yeah, the relevant x coordinate of your point there. Now, look carefully. You've got two numbers here, negative 1 and 0. Which one are we going to use? Negative the negative 1. Why is that? Because that's, the that's the x. It's, that's what it's dependent on, right? So this is all in x's. So I'm going to say when x equals negative 1. When x equals negative 1, dy on dx equals. And then I'm going to substitute in. As always, when you're doing substitution, even if you can evaluate it straight in your head, write the substitution step, please. So I'm going to go two lots of negative 1. Take away four lots of negative one cubed. And I know you might be able to do some of that in your head, but just have a look at this, like particularly this second half of the line. You are begging to make some mistake with the minus signs there if you try and do this in your head, especially when you're rushed under exam conditions. Now I've written it down. Two times negative one is negative two. This next bit here. This is going to be minus four times negative one, which is, as Rastin said, plus four. And I've got an answer. What do I do with this thing, this number, two? Uh, that's the gradient, right? The gradient at this point will be 2. So now all I need to say is the tangent is, because that's the thing I'm working out now, and I'm going to use that form of the equation of a straight line, which takes the gradient and the point. What's that form called? Point gradient, because it's got a point and a gradient. And it is, of course, the way I already want to finish that. Y minus y1, which in this case is, what's y1? It's that, that y coordinate there, so 0 equals, what's on the other side? Gradient. The gradient m, which in this case is 2, outside of x minus negative 1. I'm even going to write that, x minus negative 1, like so. Okay. Again, if you feel like you can say, oh, I can write that as x plus 1, that's fine, but I'm doing this so that I know I've gotten the equation right, and then I'll simplify. y equals, this is, say it again, sorry? 
find the gradient? Why, you, why do we assume we find it? It didn't ask us to find the gradient. Is that your question? Yeah, the tangent, sorry. Say that again. Yeah. Well, uh, it said, it, it just said find the tangent, which is very, very broad, right? Yeah, that's okay. It just says find the tangent. That sort of implies I want the equation of the tangent, but to get that, I do need the gradient as part of it. Does that make sense? Because you're right, it didn't tell us, but we needed to. Um, and I think, Saddam, you already said this is going to be 2x times x plus 1, which is 2x plus 2. You happy with that? Okay, now just put your pens down for a minute. I just want you to look up, and I want to indicate a couple of things, a couple of errors. Uh, not so much errors, they're just poor and unclear setting out, which Mrs. Lees and I, we've both seen hundreds and thousands of times. So I'm going to do, make you know, like a big deal about them and tell you not to do them, okay? So here's the first big common mistake that we see. We see people um, get this thing, get this equation, they write that down, they're like, ooh, this is the thing I have to differentiate. Because so frequently, like by the end of this course, you will have differentiated things tens of thousands of times. You're already thinking, I need to find the derivative. So your brain immediately says, I'm just going to find the derivative. And that is the derivative. But this is not equal to this, right? These are not the same thing. The equal sign does not mean, what's my next step? The equal sign means, these two things are identical, right? So that's why it's really important that you're actually right. This is what I'm calculating. Does that make sense? Rastin. So in sort of that we write f of dash of x. Okay, so if you wanted, and I guess, I mean, like I said before, if the question provides it to you in f of x's, then go ahead, use what they've got. But if they've provided it to you as y, my next line can't say f dash because there is no f of x in this question, right? Unless I said, let this equal f of x and then off you go. But why introduce new notation when you sort of already have one that's suited for the purpose? Does that make sense? Um, that is another common error, by the way. People will write instead of this, because they like uh, this original notation, they'll just write this. And the mark will be like, where the dickens does this come from, right? What, what is this referring to? It's not referring to anything in the question, so it's not valid in this context. So there's the first mistake, just, just saying equals, because it's so the next thing that you're thinking of. Please don't do that. The second thing that people will do is then they will say, um, okay, I don't just want the general derivative. I want the gradient at a particular point. And um, the point is x equals negative 1, right? So then people immediately write that. Like they found their derivative, like so. And then they just say it's equal to and they just start substituting stuff in. Okay? Now, say that again, sorry. Well, now the mark, because we've seen this so many times, right? We kind of know what you were trying to do. But we also know this is not actually the case. Because is that the gradient function of our original function? Yeah. It's not. Because the gradient function of this changes. And this is just like a particular place. So it's a common thing for people to just say, oh, my next thing is I'm going to put in a value. But it's actually a whole different thing. That's why I went to the effort, and I hope you've done this already, to say when x is a certain value, then you say the derivative is this. OK? Um, and then the last thing is, and you might notice there's a common theme here, right? The last thing is people don't say what they do next. They're just like, oh, I'm supposed to find a line now. And then this algebra just appears out of nowhere, right? Now, if you've just got a whole bunch of equal signs going down the page with no other explanation, then I'm expecting what you mean is all of these things are the same. But you're calculating separate things all the way through. Can someone tell me how many distinct steps were there? What was the first step? Um, find the differentiate. Yep, differentiate. So find the gradient function. What was step two? Find the gradient. Find the gradient at a particular place, and then a whole separate step three is now I'm going to put that all together. Okay. So I want to see that you have three steps of logic in there, so that I understand. Oh, this student clearly knows what they're doing. They're not just kind of mechanistically going through a purpose because that's what they saw in a textbook. You know why you're doing these three steps, and that's why you say it. Okay.